Hello, everyone. Um, it's like the Lord impressed upon me to do this study. Hi, Valerie, Deborah, Erlene. I saw you, you texted me, Erlene, but I couldn't get back to the text as I'm coming on here. But um, I thought I would, in, in light of what's happened with Billy Graham, I thought I would do a study on this because there are many questions out there as to where Billy Graham really is. And I think we need to get this out. Um, that will be, I will, will explain that in just, I will explain that in just a moment. Um, uh, yes, it does. Heaven does exist. Good morning, good morning, Janet, and all those coming in. Lloyd, welcome to all those coming in. I thought that this title would really bring a lot of people in. Um, I am just wonderful. I wanted to do this study, that, like the Lord impressed upon me, do this study about um, heaven or about hell because People need to understand. I know this is kind of, kind of on the uh, line of, of uh, Regina's this morning. And I know she's going to be coming on later, so I want to do it now and get it out of the way. But I want to go into, into discussion on this, and we should have our, have our Bibles and follow along. With that being said, let me offer up her up to heaven first. Dear Father in heaven, I pray that you will be with all of us today. What each, each, every, every, any of us are going through, Lord, I pray that, pray that you be with us whatever the situation might be, Lord. I pray that you'll be with Billy Graham's family as they're mourning the loss of their father. And I pray, Lord, that he is saved and we will see him in heaven someday. Only you know, Lord, whether he's saved or not. I pray that as I go into this study, Lord, that the people that don't understand what death and that it really is about, they will understand it afterwards, Lord, because we know what the Bible says about death and where we go when we die. I just pray that the Holy Spirit will lift people's minds and hearts to the truth and give me the words to say, Lord. Let us be good Bereans, as, as Regina says, and study our Bibles each and every day so we know what the Word of God says. Let us get into the Word of God and be ready for what's coming upon this earth because what's coming upon this earth, Lord, is going to be very frightful for those that are not ready for it. So I pray that we, we will all get ready and keep our minds and hearts on you, Lord. As I always say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Keep my heart renewed in you and never let it fall, no matter what. So I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to come in here and give these periscopes. Now be with all those coming on, those that are on now, and those that are coming in later. Be with us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I knew that I would probably welcome to, the, to those uh, coming on for the very first time. I knew I would get a lot of questions as to why Billy Graham is not in heaven. And I will explain to you why Billy Graham is not in heaven. One, the very, one very good reason is... If you get into the book of, of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 9.5, and I will read that to you for those that may not understand what Ecclesiastes says. Let me put my light on here so it can be easy to read. Ecclesiastes 9.5 is a very powerful verse, and it is a passage that we don't read enough, but we do need to read it because people don't understand it. Um, I think so. And I want people to understand that this passage is very easy to understand. Once you've read it and... You see what the passage is telling you. You'll understand what I'm what I'm what I'm saying when I talk about this. I want people to understand what happens when we die. Uh, I am not judging anybody. I am telling the truth. I'm sorry if you feel that way. And if you don't like what I what the title is, then you can leave because I'm I titled it what God gave me to title it. He told me what to say. And I'm telling, I'm telling you this because it's the truth. If you, if you listen to Doug Batchelor on Facebook, he said the same thing. I will read to you Ecclesiastes. That's right. The Bible is the truth. Ecclesiastes 9.5. This is what it says. And I want you to listen very, very carefully. Those of you who are skeptical about this and you think that you go to heaven or hell when you die. Well, everybody goes to heaven and they don't go to hell when they die. This is what the Bible says. Good morning, Mark. Welcome says, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. When we die, we do not go anywhere but to our graves. We go into our grave, we await the first resurrection or second resurrection, whichever one that may be. Um, um, and we have to understand that I am telling you the truth. I'm telling you what God said in his word. God is not a liar. I'm doing what God asked me to do. And when God says that the living know that they shall die, but the dead, 
but the dead know not anything. That's exactly what he means. The dead don't know anything. The memories perish. The, when you go in your grave, you don't know a thing. Hi, Torah. Good to see you. Welcome. You do not know a thing. But this all goes back to the to the time when Adam and Eve were, were um, created. Because people like to say, well, when I, when I die, my soul goes to heaven, you know, and my, and my body goes to the grave. Yes, the, you are a living soul, I should say. Right now, you did not, uh, uh, your soul and, and, and body are not separate. Your soul and body are one. The thing that goes back to God, oh, thank you. The, the thing that goes back to God when you die is your breath of life. When you, when you cease to, to, to breathe, you're gone. That is the only thing that God takes, take, takes from us is our breath of life. We do not breathe anymore. But our body will remain in our grave until the one of the two resurrections, either the first resurrection or the second, whichever one. And hopefully we'll all be in the first resurrection. Um, um, what he meant by that, he did not, did, Jesus did not go to heaven that day. Do you do you know, realize that Jesus did not go to heaven that day? Basically, what he what he was telling the thief on the cross that day was that he was saved that day, and that when Jesus comes back again, which he is coming back, he will go to heaven with the righteous and spend eternity with Jesus. That's exactly what that passage meant. He will he is not he did not go to heaven that day because Jesus didn't go to heaven that day. Jesus didn't go to heaven for forty days. When he and finally he ascended into heaven, as you know, he he was on the uh, during the ascension. You had Matthew, you had um, the apostles, three apostles. But, if, but I hope I explained it a little bit better. But anyway, that's right. He did not ascend that day. De uh, so since Jesus did not ascend that day, how why would he take the thief on the cross to heaven for that day? Oh, you're you're so welcome, and I'm glad you asked that question, because I know a lot of people get that misconstrued, and they don't quite understand it. Um, he said, yes, what he meant was, you'll, you're saved that day, but you're not going to go to heaven that day. We don't go to heaven when we die. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. I just read Ecclesiastes 9.5. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. They don't know anything. Their memories perish. They have no remembrance of anything anymore. When man was created by God, he breathed into Adam the breath of life. Adam was nothing until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the Bible says he became a living soul. And so, so therefore, when he breathed into Adam the breath of life, he became a living soul. We are all souls. You cannot separate the soul from the body because it is one. Um, well, you could say that what I'm saying is wrong, but you need to get into the word of God and study it because I'm telling you the truth. I have no reason to lie in here. God is my witness, and these people in here know that I'm telling the truth. Welcome, Richard. Good to see you. That I am telling the truth in here. When you die, you do not go to heaven. So people that think that that's where Billy Graham is at, and he's up there dancing with the angels and things, he is not in heaven. She, he is going to go into his grave along with everybody else, and he will be awaiting one of the two resurrections, either the first resurrection when Jesus comes back, or the second resurrection after the millennium. There are no two ways about it. Those are the only two resurrections, and you better hope you're in the first one. But these pastors that go and preach these people into heaven when they die, they are deceiving their congregation. It is so sad. That's right. He, he is asleep in Jesus, and we hope that he's saved. Um, we hope that he will be... He will be in one of the two resurrections. There's only two resurrections. There's a resurrection of the righteous when Jesus comes back. And there's also a resurrection of the wicked when, um, at the time, at the second, at the, after the millennium. So he will be in the resurrection, one of the two. We do not know which one. Only God knows. All we can say is, I hope that he is saved and that he will, that he will be uh, going to heaven when Jesus comes back. We do not know that for sure. Um, but I want to let people know, because I know a lot of people think that you go to heaven when you die. That is not biblical. That is false doctrine. Um, yes, it's true for everyone. I don't know why you would not think it's not true, because if you go to, your, uh, to all the graves of your loved ones, they are still in their grave. Um, the only thing that goes back to God is your breath of life. That is what God takes from you, is your breath of life. That is the spirit that God is talking about in the Bible. 
Your soul goes in the grave and remains there until one of the two resurrections. Um, yes, I am her. Um, our body and soul are together. When God breathed into Adam the breath of life, he became a living soul. Um, and that's right. Death is a sleep. That's quite a comfort, isn't it? That's quite a, a comfort. You know, when, when Jesus went to raise that, when, uh, raise that little girl that had died, Jesus said, she's not dead, she's asleep. That's all death is, is asleep. We are all asleep, and hopefully we'll be asleep in Jesus, awaiting one of the two resurrections. But if you think you're going to be, uh, when you die, you're going to be going up to heaven, and you're going to be dancing and singing with the angels, that's not true. You won't do. Um, you do not know that, and that is a terrible thing for you to say, because hellfire is not going on now. He will, he... He will be when he's going, when he's buried. He'll be in his grave. He is nowhere at this moment, right now. He's not in heaven. He's not in his grave either because he hasn't been buried yet. But once he's buried, he will be in his grave, awaiting one of the two resurrections. That's um, that's right. Hell does not exist at the moment. Hell is not a place. I will tell you that right now. Hell is an event. It is not a place. If people like to say that it's a place, it is not. It is. We do not believe in purgatory. Hell is an event. It's not a place. Hellfire will take place after the second resurrection, after the millennium, or at the, at the, at the, after the millennium, there's a second resurrection, and that's when hellfire is going to take place, when all the wicked and the angels and the uh, Satan are destroyed in hellfire, and they will be destroyed. They are, that's right. Purgatory is a Catholic false doctrine. You're so right. <laughs> that's right, and you know something? They will burn up. Satan will burn up, and so will all the wicked burn up. Because you not you need to eradicate sin. Sin is only here because of Satan. Satan is the one that brings all this sin on. If you don't eradicate sin, you're going to have it in heaven. And we know that, that heaven is going to be a perfect place. There's not going to be any sin in heaven whatsoever. And if you don't destroy the sin, you're always, always going to be with us. And we know we've got to get rid of sin. So that's why the wicked and the angels and Satan are going to be destroyed. And I just hope and pray that Billy Graham is not one of those that are going to, um, is going to, is going to be destroyed at the, at the uh, second resurrection. I don't want that for anybody. But, you know, it, 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 it's, it's right. It's necessary. It's very right. You're so welcome. You know, and I, I wanted to do this today because I felt impelled, compelled to do it. Because there are so many people that do not understand what the Bible is telling them. Yes, and the Bible is very, very clear. It is very, very clear that our thoughts perish. We do not have any memory of anything. You know, when I was a little girl and my mother died at three years of age, when I was three years of age, she died, and I was told by my family that she was up in heaven looking down upon me, and I've mentioned this before. I was a, a little girl that was afraid to do anything wrong, afraid that my mom was gonna be disappointed in me because she, she's not up in heaven looking down on me. And when I realize that my mother is in her grave awaiting, good good morning, welcome, that she's in her grave awaiting one of the two resurrections, that was the most comfort to me that I had ever received because I knew that she was not up there looking down on me and being upset with me for anything I might be doing wrong. Um, that's right. We exactly. We await the resurrection of Jesus. We either are in the first resurrection when Jesus comes back or we will be in the second mm -hmm. resurrection after the millennium when when the wicked are destroyed by hellfire. Um, that's right. We have to study to show ourselves approved. The King James Version says that. We've got to be good Bereans and we have to study to, to understand what... Mm -hmm. um, the resurrection has not happened yet. For Jesus, yes, he rose from the dead, but the resurrection for us, we're still here. Um, yeah, I know, I know. But when you're three years old like I was, I didn't understand it. Um, oh, thank you. I, I, you know, I didn't understand it, you know. But now that I've become a Seventh-day Adventist and I went to the evangelistic meetings and I heard what I'm telling you, then I understood it quite clear, clearly. And like I said, it was very comforting me to realize that my mother was not looking down on me, neither did my father. Um, no, the second coming is not a resurrection. The second coming of Jesus is is in First Thessalonians. I will read that 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 verse for those that may not understand what that verse is telling. And this is a, and people talk about the secret rapture. Um, 
I'll read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, because this throws the secret rapture theory right out the window. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus will return. He's, he's, not, he's going to return someday. Uh, yeah, they're waiting on the rapture. We know the rapture means caught away. But the rapture, you'll never find the word rapture in the Bible because it is not secret. There is no such thing as a secret rapture. I know a lot of people talk about it, and I'm sure Billy Graham probably talked about it too, that he talked about the secret rapture. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Where people are going to be snatched away, and then there's going to be seven years of tribulation, and then we're going to be taken to... Oh, wow, somebody called me a loon. Well, you know, you know what? what? I'm a loon for Jesus. I guess it's time for this person to go. Goodbye. Nice to know you. Um, but anyway... I'll be, I'll be glad when, to, when Jesus comes back again. I'm looking forward to him to come back. You know, we get people in here that, that uh, are very derogatory, you know, and stuff like, you know, I'm not going to uh, get in mean with those people. I'm going to be um, very uh, patient with these people, and I'm going to, um, um, you'll have to uh, just message me on Messenger, Valerie, and I will give it to you. Um, I am, no, I'm not perfect. Okay, good, good. No, I'm not perfect, and I don't claim to be perfect. I never said I was perfect. Did you hear me say that? Person is asking me if I'm perfect. No, I'm not perfect. But I am an instrument for God. I am speaking for God. It's in his, and it's in his word, and I'm telling you what the Bible says. And if you don't want to accept the word of God, then I don't know what to tell you, because the word of God is true. It is our only sword. It's the sword of the Spirit. That's right. And for, me, for people to ask me if I'm perfect, no way am I perfect. And if you think you're perfect too and you don't make mistakes, far from it. I make very, uh, lots of mistakes, and, but I'm learning from my mistakes. And God is helping me deal with my, st my mistakes. I have a lot of anger, and he's dealing with me on that too. Um, but I'm here to read to you 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 17, because like I said, this verse, these verses here throw the secret rapture theory right out the window because people like to have a tendency to, to talk about the secret rapture. Their pastors talk about, well, you're going to be snatched away before the tribulation. So don't have to worry about the tribulation. You're not going to be here, so don't worry about it. But I'm going to tell you this. The tribulation is coming, and we will be here for the tribulation. But let me read this verse to you. And if I miss your comments, I will go back to them when I read the, when I watch the replay. This is what 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17, or 13 to 18 says. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That verse 16 right there, takes that secret rapture theory and throw, throws it out the window because he's coming with the shout, the sound of the trumpet and the voice of the archangel. That is not a silent uh, coming at all. People like to say a secret rapture is a silent coming. Nobody knows he's coming. and You know, people are, are probably basing it on that movie, um, the uh, oh, Left Behind. I don't recommend anybody watch that movie because there's nothing but falsehood in there. I have not seen it and I don't intend to see it. That's the one with Nicolas Cage, I believe. Do not watch that movie because you are going to be deceived. You need to get into the word of God to see what God's telling you. This is the true word of God. If you listen to your pastors and they are not telling you the truth, then shame on them because they need to get into the word of God themselves. They're trying to um, make you think that everything is rosy dozy, you know, and they don't want to preach on gloom and doom. They would rather preach on prosperity. Oh, that everything's going to be okay. You're not going to be here for the for the tribulation. So don't worry. Just, you know, live your life as you would. You'll be saved and go to heaven someday. Um, but people don't understand. 
Yes, anybody that dies go into their grave. Now, we know that Billy Graham has not been buried yet because his funeral is not until tomorrow. But once he is buried, he goes into his grave and he will remain there. Hi, wel hi welcome, Lisa Renee. He will remain there until the either the second coming of Jesus or he will remain there and until the after the millennium when the, re when the wicked are raised to uh, suffer the pangs of hellfire. One of the two resurrections. Um, oh, yes, yes. I, um, I would not recommend... That's right. God is omnipresent. But I don't recommend that movie Left Behind. You know, I knew about it, but I wasn't going to watch it because I know what the Bible tells me. And the thing of it is, the people that don't know the truth, they are going to be more confused than ever. Us that know the truth, we watch that movie. We're going to know what the truth is. But those that don't know the truth and have not been told the truth by their pastors or, or haven't studied it for themselves are going to be still confused and they're going to think that that movie is telling them the truth. Well, it's not. Um, that's right. Well, you, oh, I suppose it probably is a good movie as far as enjoying it. Uh, you know, and I'm glad you did enjoy it, but you know, I don't, re I wouldn't really, really recommend it. Now, if somebody uh, gave me the movie, I probably would watch it. But other than that, I'm not going to take the time to sit down on my computer and watch the movie on the computer. Cause it's probably on YouTube, which a lot of things are. I'm not going to sit down and I'm not going to watch it because I know what the Bible is telling me. And that is nothing but total confusion. That's what this world is based on. Confusion. Everybody is totally confused. Well, thank you, Erlene, for the super hearts. Everybody is totally confused. Um, no, we do not. We do not have immortal souls. You are... So <clears throat> it says, when do we have immortal souls? Our souls are mortal. We're all subject to death right now. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. The only time we are going to have an immortal soul is when Jesus comes back and changes our vile bodies into glorious bodies. That is when we will have immortal souls. But until then, no, we are all subject to, to, de to death. Um, yes, he did. He followed him with all the light that he knew. But... Um, he did, but I'm not sure if he's going to be saved or not. I hope he is, but uh, I pray the Lord that he is saved. Only God knows that for sure. But I came in here because people are, are going to say, well, he's in heaven now. You know, he's looking down on us. You know, sure, he was a great man. And I will, um, uh, no, the Quran is not the truth. This is what you read, the King James Version of the Bible. Um, I'm not seeing some of the comments in here, but some of the comments in here are getting me kind of puzzled on what you're trying to say. Um, because people are, are taking the Bible and they're misconstruing it and they're putting into the Bible. Um, we don't have an immortal soul either. If you don't have an immortal soul, you think you think you have an immortal soul. See, that's where you're where you're wrong. You're not re you're not taking that verse Ecclesiastes nine five and and taking what it says. It says, "For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. For the memory of them perish; their thoughts perish. They have no remembrance of anything anymore. They are dead. When a person dies, the only thing that goes back to God is your breath of life. You do not go to heaven." That is, there people that are telling you that you're going to heaven when you die, the pastors that are telling you that, they are deceiving you. They need to come out of the darkness and into the into the marvelous light. Because if if they tell you that they are in heaven when they die, they are wrong. Um, where 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 is Billy Graham? Well, he isn't in his grave yet because his funeral is not until tomorrow. But once he's in his grave, that's where he will be until one of the two resurrections, either the First resurrection at Jesus' second coming or the second resurrection after the millennium when, when Jesus brings or, uh, destroys this world with hellfire um, bring, uh, when New Jerusalem comes down from heaven. Um, I know exactly what the Bible says. Um, I didn't say you're not when you die. I didn't say you're not going to heaven. I say when you die, you're not going to heaven. No, you'll go into your grave. You, your family's in their graves right now. They are not up in heaven. Um, that the things of it is people have been told this and I, I was told that for years too when I was a child I come out of the Lutheran church the Lutherans believe the same thing most churches do believe that you that you go to heaven when you die they don't preach you into hell most of them don't you can be the most vilest person on earth and they won't preach them into hell 
But I was taught that all the time until I went to the evangelistic meetings and I heard the truth as I'm telling you now. Um, yes, he's, Jesus is coming. He's, I just read it to you in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Um, but, uh, that, you know, people are asking me questions up here and I'm not, and I'm not uh, following these, these um, uh, comments that I'm seeing on here because I'm not sure what your punch, punch, but I'm trying to tell you that nobody goes to heaven when you die. You all go in your grave. We are, we are, <clears throat> we go in soul sleep. We are sleeping Jesus. Um, well, if you don't like, if you think it's a bunch of hooey, then you know what you can do? Hit that X at the top and leave. And you won't upset me one bit because it's people like you that don't want to hear the truth. You want to, you want to listen to your pastor and you want to um, uh, hear what your pastor has to say. And your pastor does not tell you the truth. Your pastor is lying to you because he knows the truth, but he's not willing to tell you the truth. Um, you say you're going to heaven, not when you die or not. You may be going to heaven, yes. I'm not saying you're not going to heaven, but not when you die. If you think you're going to heaven when you die, you're sadly mistaken. Because Jesus did not go to heaven when he died right away. He did not go to heaven, and neither did the thief on the cross. So why, are we, why would we be any better? Why would we go to heaven when we die when Jesus didn't? You know, this is foolishness that these people are believing in here. Um, you're confused about Jesus' second coming. Well, he's coming back. I read to you 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 18, where it talks about he's coming to get his, his church. He's coming for those that are, are alive and remain. He's coming for those that are in their graves. Um, no, no, it's not his third coming. You the, See, that's where you've got the seek, that's where you've got a secret rapture. You are... Uh, uh, talking about the secret rapture, which is false doctrine. That is a false doctrine that you should never have been believed in the first place. He is only coming the second time. He is not coming the third time. The Bible never talks about a third coming. It never talks about a secret rapture. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Stop believing in falsehood because it's just going to take you down. You need to get into the word of God and study it. If you're going to believe in the secret rapture, then, then I feel sorry for you because you're so lost because you have not been told the truth. Um, I am not preaching false doctrine and I think it's time for you to go and get into your word of God. Goodbye. Goodbye. That person doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, I, if you see somebody uh, derogatory, just block their comments. So um, I, blo I blocked them. Um, this is not my opinion. You know what? It's God's opinion. It is what God says in his word. I do not take anything out of context. And if people are thinking I'm taking this out of context and I'm, I'm saying it's my opinion, it is not my opinion. It is in this word. And that is what I was, I'm talking about. I am giving you what God says in his word. And if you're not getting, um, there is no other opinions. There's only God's opinion. That's all there is. God's opinion is what matters. My pastor's opinion matters or does not matter. It's God's opinion. Anybody that tells me anything that's not, that does not, it's not from the word of God. It is not, it's only their opinion. If it's from the word of God, I will accept it. But if it's not from the word of God, it is not an opinion that I will accept. That is the only thing I'm going to accept. That's right. God's word does not change. If it's from the word of God and they are telling me the truth, like Regina, when she comes on and she preaches from the Bible, I accept everything she says because she is re preaching from the word of God. She knows her Bible and she will preach from the word of God. And I'm telling you too. Um, oh, I'm, I'm glad that you agree with me. But you know, some people have a tendency to just right off the bat say, well, you're preaching falsehood. You know why? I'm glad you don't believe in a secret rapture because there, there is no such thing as a secret rapture. You know, and I've, I've, I've heard other people say the same thing. Most of the congregate or most of the world does believe in the secret rapture, unfortunately. You know, that's sad. That's because they've been brought up that way. That's what they've been taught by their pastors and they don't know any better. But I'm here to tell you, the secret rapture doesn't exist. That movie Left Behind, that's, that's what's going to happen at the end time. That's not going to happen at all. It's all a hogwash. We know what the Bible says. Um, okay. Okay. That's right. Uh, that's right. Well, that's what we've gathered up. But we also know Revelation says, those that keep the commandment of God, commandments of God, um, you're, you're, you're confused about a second coming. 
what are you confused about? Because I, I will read that to you in Second Thess First Thessalonians again, where it talks about he's going to come with the voice of the archangel, with the sound of a trumpet, and, the vo and, and he's going to come with a shout. He's coming in the clouds, as the Bible says. But if you um, take that word clouds, it's actually all it is is his angels. Oh, you want me to read it to you again? All right, I will read it to you again. Because I read it to you before, but sometimes people don't get it the first time. Um, yes, right, I read the Bible too. I'll read this passage again. Let me read verse 16. That's what I'll read to you because that's the one that talks about his coming. And this is the one that really shoots that secret rapture theory out of the, out of the, out of the water. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hi, Nico. Good to see you. Basically what that's saying is the dead in Christ will rise first, and we were, oh, shall alive and remain and be caught up together with them in the clouds after the dead in Christ are ra risen first. That's right. The word says it. You cannot deny the word of God. It is plain as day. Nice to see you too. Welcome. Good to see you, Nico. Um, so when, when do you die? Do you have to wait? No, actually, in essence, some people, well, it's just for them. Like Ellen White. She died in 1915. When she passed away, her thoughts perished. When she is resurrected, to see Jesus come, it'll just be like a moment in time for her. Like no time passed at all. You have no memory of anything. You will not know how much time has passed. Some people will have to wait a long time, yes. And others will have to wait any time at all. But you are in your grave and you will be awaiting either the first re resurrection or the second resurrection. And you better be in the first one because that's the one that's most important. You don't want to be in the second one because if you're in the second resurrection, you have lo you are lost. And you're, and you're never going to be see the light of day again once you burn up in hellfire. But I, I wanted to come on here and talk about this, um, that I want to let people know, um, yes, it is. The word of God is, the God, the Bible is inspired by the word, by God. He did, he inspired the word of God. The apostles, yes, men wrote it. But they were inspired by God to write it. Every word that's in here was inspired by God. The only thing that man did not write in the entire word of God is the Ten Commandments, which are in Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Or, or, um, I, I'm not seeing all the comments, so if I ignored it, it's not on purpose. But Exodus chapter 20 has all Ten Commandments in it. And verse 8 to 11 has the Sabbath commandment. But... For people to say that God did not write the Bible, that is, to me, that is so sad because they don't want to accept it as God's word. They say, well, it's just man saying it, so there's got to be some falsehood to it, and it's not truth. Everything in this word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, was inspired by God. I will t read a passage to you in Timothy that says that very thing because I've read it in here before, and it tells you exactly that the Bible was, was inspired by the word of by, by God. And his prop, um, yes, I, I'm thankful that you, um, okay, this is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Now that person that said that it was not written by God and it's not a, that it's not a God's word, I want you to listen to this. It said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That first word, all, that means the whole Bible was inspired by God. Not one bit of it was not inspired by God. It's just that he only, he only wrote the Ten Commandments himself because he did not trust man to write them because they he knew that they would forget about the Sabbath, which people do now, which is, which is another scope entirely. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible is inspired by the Word of God. Every bit of it. You can trust this word of God. If you don't want to trust the word of God, then I feel sorry I feel sorry for you. Because if you haven't got trust in God or haven't got trust in the Bible, what do you have? You you have that's right. There is no God. Okay, you say there's no God. Um, you woke up this morning, didn't you? You woke up this morning, which means that God gave you another another day of life. 
He didn't take your breath of life from you. And the fact that you're commenting in here proves there's a God. You look at nature. Look out your window and see the trees, the flowers. And at night, the sun, the, uh, or in the di daytime, see the, uh, the sun. And at night, see the moon and the stars. Where do you think they came from? They came from God. God put them up there. Um, well, if you, want, if you don't want to believe that God exists, then I'm sorry uh, that you feel that way. But you better start believing in God because he's, ex he's uh, wanting you to accept him. If you don't accept him before he, Jesus comes back, you'll be lost. And I don't want anybody lost. He's just waiting for you to come to him. I don't know why people like to say that God doesn't exist. I don't know what you think, what, what you, where you think you came from anyway. You came from God. That's where you came from. I know people like to say, well, I came from my mom and dad. You came from God before you came from your mom and dad because he created us the way we are. And then, and people like to, like to uh, make fun of God and make fun of everything. Um, no, nature is not science. Nature is from God. I will not accept that and people in here will not believe that. And if you want to keep talking like that, but I think it's time for you to go because I'm not going to have anybody coming in here and turning, turning this message that I'm giving into a farce because it is not a farce. What I'm telling you is the truth. If you don't want to believe it, then you can just leave because it won't bother me one bit. That's right. May God bless those in here that don't want to believe. And you know, the Bible talks about scoffers in the last days. You know, and I thank God for the scoffers because they're in here for, for a reason, you know, uh, yeah, I can block them, and I eventually will. But you know, they're in here for a reason. And a lot of the time is the devil brings them in here. Um, where did Billy Graham go then? When he, when he goes into his grave, that's exactly where he's going to go. He's going to go into his grave, and he's going to wait the one, one of the two resurrections, either the first resurrection at Jesus' second coming, or he, will, or he will be raised at the second resurrection after the millennium to only to be burned up in hellfire. That's exactly where he'll be. His funeral is not until tomorrow. He hasn't been buried yet. But he is not in heaven either. People that say he that Billy Graham is in heaven, that's, they are crazy because he's not in heaven. He is awaiting. He will be awaiting one of the two resurrections. Uh, purgatory is a false doctrine of the Catholic Church, and I'm not Catholic. I'm a Seventh Day Adventist. Um, his the no, his soul will not leave his body. The only thing that has left his body right now is his breath of life. He has ceases to exist. He is not breathing right now. That is the only thing that has left him. If you were to open up his casket, his body is there completely. His body is there. The only thing that's not there is his breath of life. That is the spirit of God. That's what God takes back. Because if those people that just came in, when Adam was created, he was not alive until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living soul. We're all living souls. You cannot separate the soul from the body. Um, prove anything you are carrying... Oh, I can prove everything I'm, I'm saying. You just don't want to accept anything. We're, that's right. We're all still here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, atheism is unstoppable. Well, I think this person needs to go. Atheism is unstoppable. Yeah, there's people in here going to believe it. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, we're going to have people in here that are going to scoff, you know. And people like to, like to take this. Um, that's right. It's not conscious entity. I read. That's right. I, exa I read. Ecclesiastes 9.5, where it says that their thoughts perish. They have no mem memory of anything on this earth. When they die, they, they, they cease to exist. If the, it's like the, their life on, uh, on this earth is finished. Their work on this earth is done. All the work that Billy Graham did, like his evangelisms and all that, is God bless you too. His work on earth is done. He is, he is now waiting for one of the two resurrections. He's not in his grave yet. But he's not in heaven either. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow, you're something else. Trump is God. Trump is not God. Trump is just a man. God is up in heaven. Um, boy. <laughs> no one knows what happens when you die. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, yes, we do. The Bible talks about soul sleeping. But I'll, I'll read to you Ecclesiastes 9.5. I'll read to you that again. People, people want to scoff in here. And I will tell you exactly what the Bible says. I'm going to read to you the Ecclesiastes 9.5 again. Ab, um, no, you've got that all wrong. Absent from the, somebody better tell you about that meaning, but absent from the body. That is not talking about that, you're, that, that you are in heaven while your body's in the grave. That does not mean that. That verse does not mean that at all. 
Somebody else in here knows a little bit more what that verse means than I do, but that does not mean that absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That does not mean that you're up in heaven while your body's in the grave. No, because you you are in your grave along with your body because you are a soul. The only thing that's gone back from God is your breath. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 9.5 again. Um, here's what Ecclesiastes 9.5 says. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. That's exactly what God Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Let me read that. Um, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. That's ex There's a good verse right there. We are going to return to dust, and the spirit of God, which is our breath, is going to return to God who gave it to us. We would not be breathing if it were not for God. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When Billy Graham passed away last week, God took his breath of life away from him, but... He is, but uh, so he ceases to exist. But his breath of life went back to God. But his soul, his body, is going to go into his grave. Um, that, <coughs> that's right. You're right. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. That your your soul is just a shell. But it, but your but your whole body, you know. Um, that's right. That's true. Paul says that he would rather be absent from the body. That's your. That's a good way to express it. Right. The spirit is the breath. Breath equals, you don't understand, when, you, when you're born, until, until you're born, you, you're not given a, you don't have the breath of life. God breathed into Adam the breath of life. I've got to keep sta sta stating this over and over, because there are some people in here that are not getting it. You're not, you're not, I don't know if, what, if, if you don't, this is the King James Version. They don't want to get it, uh, but I'm I want to, uh, people to understand that when you, if you think that Billy Graham is in heaven now, he's not in heaven. No one's in heaven now. There, are, however, there were people taken to heaven when Jesus died on the cross because the graves did open. But those are the only ones there. You know, you had you have Moses, Enoch, and Elijah that were trans. Well, Moses died and was, and was resurrected, but Enoch and Elijah were translated, were taken to heaven without seeing death. But there are there's nobody now that is that is uh, being translated to heaven by not seeing death. Um, that's right. He made us a soul. He didn't give us a soul. Well, thank you for the for the super hearts. That's right. We all we became living souls. You're exactly right. When man when God breathed into man the breath of life, we became living souls. That's exactly what happened. Um this is the King James version. This is the Bible that I go by, the King James version. No other version. Um that's the Bible that I go by. Um uh, now you you're see you're wrong. Um, that no no they're not no they're not they're in their graves awaiting one of the two resurrections. Uh, what did Jesus say to the thief on the cross? He said you'll be. What he meant by that passage? You need to break it down. You are you are taking that passage to literally mean that he was going to be with him him and he was going to heaven that day. Jesus didn't even go to heaven that day. He didn't go to heaven for forty days. He said what he meant in that passage was, today you shall be with me in paradise. It means he was saved that very day. He did not mean he was going to heaven that day. They, uh, when people are cremated, cre cremated the same thing. When they are cremated, they cease to exist. But they are going to come back to life someday. Either, the, either <clears throat> when Jesus comes back, they will be raised to newness of life. Or they're going to be raised at the second resurrection after the millennium only to be destroyed in hellfire so they're going to be raised either way that god is going to bring people back to life again um but i'm hoping i'm not, i'm getting this point across to people i know it's hard for people to understand um yeah the comma is in the wrong place we when the bible was written it was written all in one book and when when people came along and translated it they added the punctuation so there was no punctuation in the Bible when it was translated. So it was put in the wrong place. But I'm here to tell you. What he meant was. That that thief on the cross. Was saved that very day. He was going to be going to heaven. When Jesus came back. 
Because, like I said before, Jesus did not go to heaven. Why do you believe that God exists? Because his word says he exists. And because I'm here, I know he exists. I woke up this morning. He gave me another day of life. He breathed into my, he kept my nostrils going with breath. I know, that, and that's why he, I, I believe that, he, that God exists. I, look, I can look out my picture window right now, and I can see the trees. I can see all the flowers. And the sun during the day, we have clouds right now, but everything was put there by God. Um, oh, the New International Version, please throw it away. The New International Version is not a good one to read at all. Please do not read that one. That has passages missing in it. Very much so. There's a lot of passages that are 60 passages or so that are that are misleading. And, and if the passages are there, they're not complete. They're not. So don't read the New International Version. Get rid of rid of it. Um, I don't know what Billy Graham. I, why are you asking that? Billy Graham was an evangelist. Billy Graham. I don't know anything that much about him except I know that he was an evangelist and I followed him when I was younger. My aunt and I followed him when he was young. When I was younger, we would watch his crusades on TV, and I and I believed in him wholeheartedly. Now I have a tendency to believe the man is saved, but there again, I'm not God, so I don't know for sure. Now Doug Batchelor thinks that Billy Graham is saved. He did a good work. He brought a lot of people to Jesus. He preached. He preached the word of God. A lot of people came to Jesus, but. Spirit and soul are two different things. Yes, they are. The spirit and soul are two different kings. Things. Our soul is our. We are living souls right now. You, you, you're in here. You're a living soul. Your spirit is your breath of life that comes out of your nostrils. When you die, that breath of life, that spirit, will go back to God who gave it to you, and you will return to the dust of the ground. We all came from the dust of the ground. Um, how do I determine I have the right God? There is only one God. It's the God up in heaven that I serve. There is only one God. These other ones that preach on Muhammad or Allah or things like they're fake gods. They're, they're gods that don't exist, only in their imagination. Is there life after death? Well, if you're if you're talking about uh, the what I'm thinking what, what you're thinking of, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, no. But the only but there will be we will be raised again. If you want to me, um, talk about life after death, the people that are dead now that will be raised, some will be raised to newness of life and some will not. Some will have to burn up in hellfire. If you want to talk about that, yes, but, but the actual life after death, no. If that's what you're talking about, no. There is no such thing as life after death. Um, how does our soul... How does, you don't understand. You are a soul. You are not getting it. You are a soul. When God breathed into Adam, the, his nostrils, the breath of life, he became a living soul. The fact that you are breathing, the fact that you are alive, means that you are a soul. Your spirit is the breath of life. God will eventually take that from you. You will go into the dust of the ground, and you will wait one of the two resurrections. He will take your breath of life back that he when, that gave it to you. That is what's going to happen. Um, that's right. Some of us are not, we're all going to get to the point where we're not going to breathe one day. That's right. Then um, God will take our breath of life from us and, and we will cease to exist. Um, only, yeah, well, that's what you say. It only exists in my head. I think it's time for you to go because you're, you're nothing but a scoffer. And I think it's time for you to go. Oh, I think that time for that. Well, I didn't get that person blocked. I'll block him later. But you know, you're going to get scoffers in here that are, are, are taking this message and they're, and they're trying to desiccate, the, de, desiccate this message and try to throw a monkey wrench into it. But you know, I'm going to keep right on preaching because you know what? The devil is angry. And I know he is angry. He's angry at me because I come in here and I preach the word. And he does not like it. He hates the fact that I get into the word of God and I read from the word of God and I talk about God and I talk about Jesus. And, you know, it's, it's very sad, but we know the devil has got very short time. He's going to do that. Um, the message is that Billy Graham is not in heaven. You can read the title. You may have to go back and watch the replay. But the, uh, I didn't see you in here, Laura. Welcome. I missed you coming in here. If I missed anybody from coming in here, I welcome you all for coming in here. If you want to share this out, feel free to share it out because this is a very important message. Um, well, now listen, I'm, I'm blocking those that are very derogatory, that call me names, 
that are using bad language. Those are the ones that I block because, oh, I, good to see you. You're beautiful too. Welcome. You know, the people that are very derogatory and tell me that it's all in my head and stuff, those people have no, no idea. But, you know, I'll leave them in here for a little while because maybe they'll finally uh, get 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 the get the I'll finally get the point across to them and they'll finally realize that I'm telling the truth because I have no reason to lie in here um I don't I am not paying attention to all the comments I'm sorry if you think I'm confused I'm not confused about anything I am not paying attention to all the comments sure you can I am I am preaching and that's what Regina does too a lot of us we don't read the comments I will read the comments when I thought when I um watch the replay but if I don't see your comments now, it's not because I'm not I'm ignoring you. It's because I'm not really seeing them. Um, your brother is not up in heaven. I'm sorry to say your brother's not up in heaven. I was told my mom is up in heaven. Your brother is in his grave awaiting one of the two resurrections. I am not confused. I'm not giving you false doctrine. But you have been told wrong. You have been told that he's up in heaven. And your pastor is deceiving you. How dare he? How, how dare he? Shame on him. Shame on him. Oh, yes, he is. He's, oh, no, I'm not. I'm going by the word of God. You can, you can, you can deny that I'm telling the truth. You can deny it all you want, but your brother is not in heaven. He is, he is not up there singing with the angel and dancing with the angels. He's in his grave awaiting one of the two resurrections. Um, oh, yeah, it does. That's true. <laughs> but I, for the 12th time, I use, yes, I am on Seventh Day Adventist. Yes, I am. Um, he is not in heaven. If you're going to keep saying that, um, I'm going to have to block you because I am not going to take these people that are derogatory and keep, keep, keep taking this message and throwing a monkey wrench into it. Okay. You say, all oh, what was a false prophet? I think it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. Oh, I didn't get that and blocked. Um, people in here that say Ellen White was a false prophet. She was not. She was the messenger for her time. She was the great prophet of her day. And she was, she Gave a lot of prophecies that have come true, and um, oh, good, good. She has, she has. Uh, yes, please report these people that I don't, I don't get because I'm missing some of these comments. Um, oh, she said he's not in heaven. He's that's right. He that's right. He's in. Yes, he is. Um, no, he's not. He's not in heaven. I'm sorry. Anybody that says their loved ones are in heaven, I thought the longest time too that my mom was up in heaven. But when I found out she's not in heaven, that she's in her grave awaiting one or two resurrections, that was the most comfort to me I've ever had. Because I didn't want her to be up in heaven and looking down on me and thinking I'm doing bad things and be upset with me. Um, oh, you know what? I'm, thank you for telling me I'm full of it. You know what I'm full of? I'm full of Jesus. I'm full of Jesus and the truth. But thank you for saying so. Yes, I am. I'm full of the truth. If you don't want to accept the truth, well, that's on you. But I'm here to tell the truth. And I'm not here to lie to anybody. Um, I'm here to tell the truth. And most of these people in here know me and they know that I'm telling the truth. Um, that's right. Hell will be a fire that destroys the wicked. That's right. The wicked and their angels and Satan are going to be destroyed someday. And people in here that think that hell is a place, it's not a place. It's an event. That's, that it, it's, it's a total event. It's not a place. Heaven is a place, however. And we know that we're, we hope to get there someday. But we're not going to get there until Jesus comes back. Because... Okay, let me ask you a question. You people that say that your loved ones, I just happened to, the, the Lord just brought this to my mind. He wanted me to bring this to your, your attention. You say that your loved ones are in, are in heaven right now. Then who in the world is Jesus coming back for? If your loved ones are in heaven, why is he coming back at all? You're preaching them in heaven. He has nobody to come back for. I don't understand it. You people are preaching a false doctrine. You're, you're believing a false doctrine. If, you're, if your family's in heaven, he has, he has no reason to come back, does he? He has no reason to come back at all. He's not going to come back if people are in heaven because they're already there. You know, what's he coming back for? You know, th th that's crazy. Um, it, it, I, I don't understand some people. Uh, people are, uh, where are they then? They are in their graves. They are in their graves. I read to you Ecclesiastes 9, 5, where the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Their thoughts perish and they have no remembrance. I'll keep reading that verse until people get it. They are in their graves. When Jesus talked about sleep in the Bible, he, or death in the Bible, he called it sleep. Um, God is up in heaven. 
God is a spirit. God is up in heaven. God is real, though. That's right. The people that don't believe him. There are many. Every, okay. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this one more time to get people to believe it. Everybody that's in their graves right now, they are awaiting one of the two resurrections, either the first resurrection of the righteous when Jesus comes back, or the second resurrection after the millennium when, when Jesus destroys this world with hellfire and he brings the new Jerusalem down from heaven. They are in their graves, and that's exactly where Billy Graham is going to be. He's going to be in his grave. Um, he is he is not going to be going to heaven. Um, oh, Jesus didn't speak English. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes, we are living souls. Don't you understand it? I told you. When, man, when God breathed into Adam his breath of life, he became a living soul. You cannot separate the soul and the body. They are one. The only thing that goes back to God is your breath of life. That is the only thing that goes back to God. It seems like some people in here just are not getting it. It is so sad that they are not getting it. You know, and I'm going to keep preaching this and I'm going to keep saying it until people get it. We are living souls. We are all souls. And the fact that we are here on this periscope means that God gave us another breath of life. He gave us another day to live. No, you are not getting it. I'm sorry, but I think it's time for you to go. It is time for you to go. Goodbye. Whoops, I didn't get that one. But anyway, um, I'll get some of these people when I, um, when I, when I uh, watch the replay. But people in here are just not getting it. I figured that that using this as a title would get would get a lot of people in here and i'm glad i made this as a title this is what god told me to pick because i wanted people to understand that billy graham is not in heaven your family is not in heaven my mother my father my brother my aunts my uncles my grandparents they're all dead my father-in-law my mother-in-law none of them are in heaven they're all in their grave awaiting one of the two resurrections there is no in between they're not in heaven because you're putting people up in heaven. Who's Jesus coming back for? Uh, Jesus, if, if you're going to put everybody in heaven, they're, they're, you know, you might as well say Jesus is coming back as futile. Because uh, I cannot translate Hebrew. I don't know Hebrew. Uh, well, yeah, I do too, Erlene. I study and read the Bible too. And Erlene could testify that I'm telling you the truth. Every, most people in here will tell you that I'm telling the truth. I know I have a few scoffers in here. But... I thank you for you scoffers. You've been brought in here for one reason, one reason only. only. My, my, uh, my logic is floored. Well, I think your truth of the logic is floored. Let's put it that way. My logic is truth. I'm telling you the truth. And I know I'm going to be persecuted for, the, for telling the truth. I'm going to be put down before, for, for telling the truth. Jesus was put down. And I know I'm going to be persecuted severely someday. I'm pers being persecuted now. And I know there's another day coming where... Uh, it's going to get to the point where we're going to be persecuted a lot more than I am now. I've accepted that. Persecution is coming upon us. Um, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand these people in here. Um, I am not, oh my goodness, I'm indoctrinated. You know what? I'm indoctrinated in this word of God. I'm indoctrinated in the truth and thank you for saying so. Praise the Lord, somebody's finally getting it. Yes, I'm indoctrinated into the truth. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm indoctrinated into the truth. And I will never come in here and tell anything else but the truth. The unadulterated truth. And those that don't want to hear it, they don't have to come in here. Because I will not do anything else but tell the truth. I do not apologize for telling the truth in here. And Regina doesn't apologize for telling the truth. But we have to tell the truth. Because there's coming a day when we are going to be censored. We're not going to be able to come in here and get give the truth anymore. And I want to be able to give this truth as it is in the word of God. And if I can't give this the truth, my salvation is online too. That's right. He is not in heaven. People that think he is in heaven. Um, well, you can dust off your feet and say goodbye. I thank you for coming on and praise God that you are in here. But I hope you, that you understand that I'm telling the truth. Um, there is no, there will, there is no hell right now. That's right. Heaven, heaven does exist. Heaven is just an event. Heaven is not a place anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, somebody monitored. Well, it's probably something that you said that, that they did not agree with. It's, uh, now I get monitored. I got caught, caught monitored yesterday too from, from a Leslie Nance's scope. She was talking about eggplant. And every time I use the word egg, eggplant, I got monitored. Um, 
Oh. Oh, I'm not trying to brainwash people. I think it's time for you to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. Bye-bye. People trying to people say I'm trying to brainwash people. You know, I'm not trying to brainwash people. I'm trying to tell people the truth. But you know, uh, oh my goodness. Oh no. Wow. 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 I think that's sad. Somebody tell me, oh my goodness. That person says devil has done me up. Wow. You know, <laughs> I had blocked those big ignore. He ignored. He was blocked. You know. <laughs> Well, you know, people that are going to be derogatory towards me and call me names, I will block them, you know. And uh, Jesus will wipe his... Uh, you, you say did Jesus block people. You will be, you'll be, you're, you're one step away from being blocked, too, if you keep it up what you're doing, too. You will be blocked. Um, uh, I have... I'm trying... I'm being more tolerant than I, have, than I have been in the past, though. These people are being derogatory and are coming in here and saying the things they're saying. I don't have to put up with some of the things that are being said. You know, and I'm going to block anybody that's derogatory. Um, okay, this time, it's time for you to go. Not right now. It's time for you to go. Goodbye. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, I think that person I meant to block. Yeah, I got. Oh, you're welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, this time for this person to, to go. I think I'm going to block this person right here. I think it's time for me to block that person. There we go. I had to block that person. I did. I just blocked him. You know, that's what the block button is for, and I'm going to block anybody that I feel that is that is, that is not right. If they're if they're doing things in here, they're saying things that they shouldn't. Um, oh well, you know something. To give this message out the truth, I can't be in a softer tone. I'm sorry. Um, I can't I can't be soft. I have to get the I, if I speak loud, it's because I have to speak loud. I can't speak in a softer tone because you know why? The message will not get across. If I speak in a softer tone, it's not going to get across. Um, you have, I have to speak in a, in a tone that people are going to hear. Um, no, I don't know anything about the Mormon's faith except that, they, uh, that uh, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. They, I know they go to church on Sunday. Um, okay, this person's got to go. That, uh, just block some of these people because I missed another one again. I have a lot of blocking to do when I watch the replay. You know, I'm not trying to be derogatory. I'm not trying to be mean. And I will say that from the outset. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody in here. They think I'm trying to be mean. But I have a right to get the truth out. The thing of it is, you're welcome. A lot of people in here just don't want to hear the truth because they don't know what the truth is. They think they have been um, told the truth, but they've been blinded by the truth. So when they come in my periscopes and I tell the truth, they think it's false doctrine. But they're, you know why? Because they're not willing to get into the Word of God and read for, for the, tell and, and see if what I'm saying is true. I've had people come in here and say, and have, have told me that they have, since I've been giving some of these periscopes, they have, they have started reading the Bible and they're understanding that where I'm coming from and they, and they believe the truth now. They accept the truth, just like Mark. He was not a Sabbath keeper for the longest time, but I kept preaching on the Sabbath. He finally got into the Word of God and started reading the Sabbath, about the Sabbath, started going to church on Sabbath. He's accepted the Sabbath because he finally realized that I was telling the truth. If people come in here and think that I'm lying and I'm, 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 I'm uh, just talking uh, over my head, I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. I have a, a, a mission to tell people the truth. I have a hankering for souls. I want people to come in here to be saved. I don't want anybody lost, but it's their choice. God gives, thank you for saying that. God gives us free will. Um, if you do not go to heaven, where do you go? When you die, you go to your grave, awaiting one of the two resurrections. Um, oh, thank you for, for saying so. You go, to your, you go to the grave to await one of the two resurrections, either the resurrection of the righteous, righteous when Jesus comes back, um, or the resurrection of the wicked when when uh, after after the millennium, so it's one of the two. You you gotta um, that you got to accept what what I'm saying here because that's what God says. Um, no, 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 uh, -uh. no. You don't understand. Your body is your soul. You're not understanding. When God breathed into Adam the breath of life, he became a living soul. I'm trying to tell you right now. You are a soul. You have a spirit and a soul right now. Once you die, 
Your soul remains with you, but your spirit, which is a breath of life, goes back to God who gave, who gave it to you. You return to the dust of the earth, because we all come from the dust of the ground. From dust thou art, and from dust we shall, and to dust we shall return. That's exactly what the Bible says. We are going to retust, return to the dust of the ground. I'm trying to explain it to you, and I can't, I can't explain it any better than I have already. I'm, I'm trying to get this point across. I don't want you to be um, swayed by your pastor saying that people go, people go to heaven when they die because the, the pastors are misleading you. They know the truth, but they don't want to tell you the truth. And unfortunately, a lot of those pastors are going to be lost because they're not telling you the truth. It's very, very sad. Um, that's right. The Spirit of God is in my nostrils. That is exactly what, that is a very good verse. Exactly. Which means when you die, the Spirit of God, which is your breath of life, goes back to God who gave it to you. Your body remains in the grave, which is your soul. It remains in the grave until the, one of the two resurrections. I can't say it any plainer than that. I wanted you to understand that because I know a lot of people are questioning where Billy Graham is or where he'll be going to. Um, oh, <laughs> How do I know more than your priest? Because your priest isn't telling you the truth. I'm sorry. Your priest is 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 is, is, is getting you into false doctrine. I'm sorry. The you, that pastors say they know a lot, but do they know anything? If they don't get into this word of God, <coughs> if they don't get into this word of God and preach the word of God the way it is in the word of God, they're not telling you the truth. Your priest is not telling you the truth. He's got you snowed. He's got you snowed, making you believe that you go to, that you go to heaven when you die. He's not telling you the truth. That's the problem. A lot of people will take what their pastors or their priests say or whatever as gospel. They won't get into the word of God and read what God says. This is what I go by. My pastor could be standing up there on Sabbath mornings and be preaching to me. If he hasn't got the Bible in front of him and if he hasn't, and, he, and it's not telling me what I need to know, then I don't listen to him because it has to come from the word of God. These pastors that preach on Sunday mornings, they're not preaching from the word of God. They're, they're, they're getting the Bible to mean what they want it to mean instead of what it really means. And it's time that they get into the word of God. They start telling their congregations the truth. They start telling them what the Bible says and stop leaving, leading them down the primrose path and putting them into darkness. Because... If you, want, if you don't want to be in darkness, you need to come out of those Sunday-keeping churches because you're going to stay in darkness. Those Sunday-keeping churches are going to keep you there, which is another, another periscope for another time, which I preached on Sunday before. But that's that. Yeah, you're right. They cherry-pick. They pick, they pick and choose what they want to preach on. And basically, it's the same Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But when it comes to the the time of trouble coming upon us, but the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, forget those. They won't even preach on them because they don't understand them to preach on them because there's a lot of symbolism there and they don't understand it, so they're not going to preach on it. They don't They don't want to preach on gloom and doom like I do. They want prosperity. Prosperity is going to get us nowhere. Um, when you die, and I'm glad these people are, yes, you go into your grave and you are asleep because Jesus called death in the Bible asleep. When he, when he talked about Lazarus, he said Lazarus is asleep. When he talked to Mary and, Mar Mary and Martha, they talked about how, how Lazarus had died. If, if he had come when they wanted him to, he, the Lazarus would not have died. And he told them, he said, Lazarus is asleep. He called death in the Bible asleep. That's exactly what it is. It's everyone that's in their grave, they are asleep whether they are asleep in Jesus, we don't know. But some are asleep in Jesus, some some are not. And I want you to understand that when you die, you will go to your grave. You will not go to heaven. Uh, that is not you, that is not pertaining to what I'm talking about. That has nothing to do that you're that you're absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. You're not, you're misconstruing that pa that passage. Erlene knows exactly exactly what that passage means. I'm not exactly sure the exact meaning of it, but it does not mean that your body's in the grave and your soul is up in heaven where where with dancing with the angels because your soul is your body. You can't separate the two. People, stop separating your soul and body. Your spirit is the breath of life. Your soul and body are the same. You cannot separate them too. Um, 
I don't understand why people in here are just not getting it. They bring that passage up to be absent with the bodies to be present with the Lord. And they take it and run with it. As if that's the only passage in the Bible that means anything at all. There's many passages in the Bible. See, they're cherry picking again. They want to cherry pick that to say that that verse means, well, I'm, I go to heaven when I die. And you're not going to tell me it doesn't mean anything. That's the, that, that's the only verse that you're going by. Well, you, you, you don't know the Bible very well. It's, it's sad that you're just taking one verse to get the meaning out of, out of a, a doctrine that your pastor has. You know, that's, that's sad. These pastors, have a lot of them are preaching false doctrine, but they'll take one passage out of the Bible. Yeah, well, this is what I, this is what that doc, the, my doctrine is talking about. But you have passages that go together. You take the passages before that passage to be absent with the body, present with the Lord. Passage in front and behind it, and you'll get the meaning of it. Don't take just the one passage. That is what people do. They take the one passage, and they try to get the meaning out of that one passage. You cannot do that. Passages go together. I hope that I've, I've explained this enough, and that you understand that I'm not here to bullshit anybody and to lie to you and 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 tell you that that what i'm telling is not true because it is true um so tell me again what happens when you die you go into your grave okay you go into your grave and wait one of the two resurrections either for the first resurrection the resurrection of the righteous or you'll resurrect at the second resurrection because we know there is a second resurrection you in your grave when you die, the only thing that goes back to God is the breath of life, which he gave to you when you when you started breathing. That is what the Spirit of God is, it's your breath of life, because he breathed into Adam. He created Adam, and when he until he, breathed, until he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, Adam was not alive. Once he breathed into his nostrils, he became a living soul. And then when he made Eve, he took one of the Adam's ribs and created Eve from that, and breathed into her nostrils the breath of life, and she became a living soul. That's what... Each and every morning when you wake up, you can praise God that he's given you another day of life. He's, he's given you, kept your breath in your life, in your body, and you're able to come on here. And you're able to, to talk to other people. Um, well, <coughs> uh, well you, don't wanna, you don't wanna believe that? The spirit is not your body. The spirit is your breath of life. Your body is your soul. You go back to dust. The Bible says, from dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. Are you going to call God a liar and say that you don't believe the word of God? I have read that in the Bible. It says, from dust thou art, and shalt, dust, dust thou shalt return. I haven't read to you that the Bible talks about the people are going to return to dust. Uh, how are you not comprehending? You're, you're trying to, to, to demean the message and get it to mean what you want it to mean or what your pastor says it means instead of what it really means. You need to get into the word of God and study it to show yourself approved. You're, ju you're just taking what your pastor says as law. Pastors have been known to be wrong. Even Seventh-day Adventist pastors, if they're not preaching in the Word of God and, they're, and they don't have their Bibles open and they're not showing you what the Word says, then I don't believe them. You don't believe the pastor unless he's got the Word of God in front of him because so many of them will stand up there and they'll say, well, I say this and I say that. It should be, thus saith the Lord. If it's not, thus saith the Lord, then, it, then it's what they say, then it's not true. And I don't want you to come along and say, well, Karen said this and Karen said that. That is not, not, the, not right. I don't want you to say that. I want you to say, well, Karen said, thus saith the Lord. I am saying what, what I'm saying is, thus saith the Lord. What the Lord says is true. It's not what I say, it's what the Lord says. But I'm only telling you what the Lord says in his word. And what his word is true is our sola scriptura. It's our only word that we have to go by. Without this, we are lost. We need to get into this each and every day. That's exactly right. We are going to be held accountable for what we say and do. The sad thing of it is the people that have come in here and that have taken this message and tossed it and thrown it aside, you have been told the truth. And right now, God is going to hold you accountable for hearing the truth. You are expected to receive this truth with uh, one, with loving kindness and accept, expect it to accept the truth. If you don't accept it once you've heard it, then you are on dangerous ground because once you have heard the truth and you refuse to accept it, Hebrews 10, 26 says, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. You got it. You got to accept the truth when you hear it. My husband and I at the time when I was married, we accepted the truth when we heard it. That's, 
the Bible does. Yes, that's my God. God will say the truth is not in you. He, he's going to come to some people someday. and He's going to say the truth is not in you. I never knew you depart from me that do wickedly. He's going to say that I don't want that for anybody, but that, that is going to, it's going to be that way. People that have come in here and heard the truth. It behooves you to get into the word of God and see what the truth says. See if I'm telling the truth or not, because if you're, if you reject it, you are actually rejecting the Holy Spirit. And to reject the Holy Spirit is blasphemy. And God cannot accept that. That is the one, the one sin that he will not forgive is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So if you are, are inclined to, to reject the truth, then you better, be, you better uh, uh, pray the Lord that you haven't rejected the Holy Spirit. Because I'm afraid a lot of people in here come in here and some of the things they say, you know that the Holy Spirit is not in them. The devil's brought them in here and they're doing what they want to do. Um, you don't believe in God. Oh, you know, that's so sad. I wish you would. You know what? Um, I am not judging. I am telling you the truth. There is a difference. I am reproving people. There is a difference. I am, telling, I am doing what God would do. God is judging in his word. And when his, and when his word says something, I say the same thing. Um, well, you can, my opinion is God's opinion. You say it's my opinion. My opinion doesn't count. It's what God says. And what I'm saying is what God says in his word. So that is not my opinion. It is God's opinion. So if you want to accept my opinion, you expect my opinion, then you're, you're respecting God's opinion because that's exactly what it is. It's God's opinion. Um, that's right. I'm telling you what the Bible says. You have to get into the word of God to understand. Um, that's right. I do not come in here to try to, to lie to anybody because if I lie to people, my salvation is online too. I'm, I've got a right to tell the truth because there's someday I'm not going to be able to tell this truth anymore. And I want to be able to tell the truth when I have a right, when I have a chance to give it, because we're going to be censored someday. We're going to be, won't be able to give the truth, but I want to be able to give this truth while I still have a chance. And I want people to understand that I'm doing this because I love you enough that I want you to accept the truth. I know not everybody's going to accept the truth in here. I can understand that, you know, but I'm hoping and praying that those that are willing to accept the truth will get into the word of God and follow the truth because, because like I said, I, we have a message to give, but not only do we give this message, we are to live the message. Um, why is Billy not, I did not say he's not going to heaven at all. I said he's not in heaven now. He has died. He's going to his grave. Well, he will remain there until one of the two resurrections, either the first resurrection when Jesus comes or the second resurrection after the millennium when Jesus destroys this world with hellfire. Um, what is an SDA Christian? We are Seventh-day Adventists. We worship on Sabbath, worship on Saturday, which is the Seventh-day Sabbath, and we, we follow the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We also have doctrines of our church that we follow as well. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, SDA all the way. I have not always been a Seventh-day Adventist, however. I did believe in Sunday. I believed in a lot of the things I'm telling you now. I believed in that um, people die, people when they die, they go to heaven, until I heard the truth. And once I heard the truth, I knew I had to accept it because I didn't, you know, it was hard at first because I had, I, I had believed so many years. I was, I was in my thirties when I, when I accepted this truth or in my twenties, early twenties, when I accepted this truth, it was hard for me to, to accept it at first because it was not in the norm. It was, I was way off base. And that's, I think that's what it is for a lot of people that come in here. It's totally different than what they've ever heard before. So to hear this truth. They, it's foreign to them. It was foreign to me too. But I, I, I am understanding the truth now. I know where the truth is. Um, and I, when God says something, um, yes, I am. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, SDA all the way. And I'm thankful that God brought me into the Seventh-day Adventist church. Um, he is in the grave awaiting one of the two resurrections. When he goes into his grave, all his thoughts perish. He doesn't have no record of time. He does not know what time of day it is, when it is, what time of year it is. All his thoughts perish. His memories perish. When he gets to, when he gets to heaven, if he does go to heaven when Jesus comes back, then he'll have a different body altogether again. Um, but right now, he is not buried yet, but he is not in heaven either. Um, that's right. There's no remembrance in the grave because Ecclesiastes 9.5, I read that. 
Nobody, they're not going to remember anything. Their thoughts perish. They have no remembrance of anything. Um, um, oh, well, yeah, some, a lot of us feel like we're wasting our life away. But, yeah, you know, money does, isn't everything. Um, you have Jesus with SDA beliefs. Well, that's wonderful that you have the SDA beliefs, but, you know, that's right. The dead know not anything. Ecclesiastes 9.5. That's a passage I want everybody to get in there and study for themselves. Read it and reread it because the Bible is true. Everything I've read to you is from this word of God. I did not ad lib. I did not change any of the wording in the Bible. Um, not necessarily was he a false prophet. He preached Jesus. He did preach Jesus. However, he was a Sunday keeper. Um, as I understand it, he had our books. He knew about the Sabbath. Now, whether he ever accepted the Sabbath or not, I do not know. But all I'm telling you is that he's not in heaven now. He will not be in heaven until either Jesus comes back at the, for, at the uh, his second coming or at the second resurrection of the of the of the wicked when when he destroys this world with hellfire. So that that's all I can tell you right now. That that's what the truth is all about. And that's why I titled it what I did because I knew I'd get a lot of people in here because people don't understand. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm i sorry it threw you off. I didn't want to throw you off. Um, okay, thank you. I didn't want to throw anybody off I, uh, by, t by titling that. I just wanted people to understand that he is not in heaven right now. And he won't be in heaven until Jesus comes back. Until Jesus comes to take him to heaven. If he's saved, which I hope and pray that Billy Graham is saved. That, that he'll be in heaven someday. Because he did do a great work. You know? He did a great work bringing Jesus, bringing people to Jesus, you know, and, and, um, uh, well, God cares. You cannot, you cannot say it doesn't matter. And who cares what day the Sabbath is? God cares. He said in, in, hi, Marilyn, welcome. God said in, in the Bible, in, a, in Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He knew that people would forget. Good to see you, Marilyn. You'll have to watch the replay because I've been in here quite a while. But anyway, he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou work and do all thy, shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day, is, which is Saturday, is the, is the Sabbath. It's not Sunday. I know a lot of people think it is, but it's not Sunday. It's the Sabbath. Um, oh, okay, good. Um, will we recognize each other in heaven? You know something? That's a good question, but I believe we will. Um, because we had a, we talked about it in Sabbath school last Sabbath about, uh, Stephen. You know, he was stoned by Saul. Of course, he was Saul at the time. You know, Saul held the cokes for the men that stoned Stephen. Can you imagine how it's going to be for Stephen? When he's up in heaven and he sees him up there and he knows who Saul was and he sees him in heaven because he wouldn't think he'd be there. And he realizes that that he was in heaven and he would question, he'd ask, why are you here? Because he did not know it. After, of course, after that, we know that he became Paul. He got converted. But can you just imagine the look that Stephen's going to have realizing that Saul, as he knew it, Paul, but he knew him as Saul, was in, would be going to heaven, you know. I believe we will recognize everybody. We're going to recognize our loved ones. You know, we're all going to be changed, but we're still going to recognize them anyway. We're going to be changed. We're going to have a glorious body. These bodies that we have now are so racked with pain and so racked with sin that when we get to heaven and when Jesus comes back, are they going to be sin free? We're going to have a glorious body, a body that we can, a uh, holy body. You're exactly right, Marilyn, a holy body. You know, uh, and we're not going to have, be, we're going to be free of pain, free of sin. Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely I am. Yes, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I preach him all the time. And Marilyn, she just came in here. She knows I know Jesus. And she she knows I love Jesus. And she loves Jesus too. And I, I love Jesus. She preaches Jesus all the time. So do I. Jesus is the one I'm going to heaven to see. Oh, not for you, General. Oh, yes. Everybody in here should be saved. I hope they are. Um, um, will I see him in my lifetime or will I be died before he comes back? That is hard to say. A lot of us are going to be laid to rest before Jesus comes back. And a lot of us are going to be alive when Jesus comes. Whichever, whichever is meant to be, that's what's meant to be. But if you, but if you die before Jesus comes back, you know what's going to happen? The very first thing you're going to see 
when, you, when you're raised is you're going to see Jesus' face. So I want you to know that. You're not going to know anything else. You're, you're not going to have any remembrance of anything. You're, you know, you're going to go to your grave, but the first face you're going to see when, you, when you're resurrected is the face of Jesus. And that's going to be a beautiful face to see. I'm looking forward to that day too. Um, oh, I can see you. I can see you. Uh, I saw your, your, um, your post. Um, and uh, that'll be love. That'll be uh, wonderful to see the face of Jesus. Um, God is not going to come. And yes, he can come anytime. I think that's Jonathan. You've been, you've asked the same question over and over, Jonathan. Um, uh, but you know something? I hope that we're all ready for Jesus to come because he is coming soon. We don't know when he's coming, but he's coming very soon. We have to get through the time of trouble first. The time of trouble is coming. Um, Acts 15, the time of trouble is coming and coming very fast. Um, we know, we know it's, it's coming upon us and we have to be ready for it. Um, read Acts 15. It's a great, oh, it's a great verse. Uh, what's, what chapter in that verse? Do you want the whole, because if it's a whole chapter, I don't want to read a whole chapter. If you could, if you got a certain verse you want me to read, um, cause there, cause there's a, this is a long chapter and I don't want to read the whole chapter, but anyway, um, but anyway, I want everybody to understand. I hope that this, um, title didn't really throw you off because, I didn't mean for it to come off the way it did, but that's the title the Lord gave me. And when he gave me that title, I thought, well, this is a very good title for me to title it. And I just want people to understand. Um, oh, oh, the law of Moses. Um, the law of Moses was, we, is, have, was done away with when Jesus died on the cross. When he died on the cross, that's the Levitical law. That was the, you know, the, the other Sabbaths, the and the sacrifices and stuff that was what was done away with when Jesus died on the cross. But the Ten Commandment law itself was not done away with. It's still with us to this day because Jesus didn't come to destroy the law; He came to fulfill. Uh, oh yeah, we we don't want to be misled. The problem of it is we have to be sure that we get in, keep, we stay grounded in the Word of God, always. Keep in the word of God. And I appreciate Marilyn Scopes at night because she comes in and, and she gets into the word of God and she reads passages. And if there's something that a passage that she's not quite understanding, we try to help her if she, you know, if she is trying to find something that like the other night she was, she didn't know about where it talked about my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. She didn't know how it was worded. And I put the word destroyed up there. She realized, well, after reading it, that that's what it was. You know, we help her along, but she gets into the Bible every night and she reads it. You got to stay grounded in the Word of God. If you don't, you're not going to know what the Bible says. This Bible is our only guide. Um, so I hope and pray. Um, no, she's not SDA, but I love her as a as a as a, as a beautiful human human being, and uh, I pray that someday she will be SDA. But she respects me as my as my uh, in my faith because. She does come on my Sabbath scope and she will wish me a happy Sabbath. So she does, she does realize that I am a Sabbath keeper and she respects me for my, for my faith. And I appreciate that. So does her mother. And a lot of people do. Um, and, and it's, it's wonderful that we can all come together and like minded, mindedness, you know, and be in one accord because that's what we need to be. We need to be in one accord in Jesus, you know, and I hope this has helped people understand what I, what I meant by my title, because, um, yes, it's, no, it's not a joke, Jonathan. He's really coming back. He's really coming back. Uh, and, and that, well, God's law is the 10 commandments. There is no other law, but the 10 commandment law. Um, that's why, that's why there's only one way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. We can't come to the, we only come to the father, but by him. Um, that's right. He is coming back to this earth again. He's coming back very, 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 very soon. Jesus is coming back very soon. I read First Thessalonians four. Um, no, there. Yes, that. Cause there, yeah, we know, and I've been saying this, and if you've been on here enough, you know that that we as believers, and even the non-believers, none of us go to heaven when we die. We don't go straight to heaven. Jesus didn't go straight to heaven when he died, did he? And, he, and I know people ask me about the thief on the cross, what, what that passage meant. What that passage meant was he said he was saved that day. He didn't mean he was going to heaven that day. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. It meant he was going to be taken to heaven. 
When Jesus comes back, he will take him to heaven. Jesus was on this 40 days after he died. He Hi, Mercedes. Good to see you. Welcome. He was not taken to heaven when uh, he did not go to heaven when he died. So why would the rest of us go to heaven? The thing of it is, like I said, if you're going to preach everybody into heaven when they die, who's he coming back for? He said, it's crazy to preach people in heaven. He's coming back for his saints. And you start preaching them all into heaven. He might as well not come back at all because that's who he's coming back for. He's coming back for each and every one of us. And we, we you, you start preaching them in heaven, that's false doctrine. And I don't want people to go around and believing this false doctrine. Um, and I want you to get into the word of God. Um, well, we know that no, um, during the time of trouble, no, no, the sky is going to be very bright. When Jesus comes back, the sky is going to be very, very bright. It's going to be, this clouds, are, he's going to come with his clouds. And his clouds are angels. This coming is going to be very bright. His coming could be even at midnight. But the sky is going to be so bright, it's going to be like day. And, we, and you're going to see him coming. That's what people talk about the secret rapture. How can that be true? Because we're going to see Jesus come. Jesus come. It's going to be so bright. You know, they say, well, Jesus is coming <clears throat> to take his church out of, out of the, out of the, um, away from the rapture and uh, away from the tribulation. Then there's going to be seven years of tribulation, which is not true, which is not biblical. And then, then he's coming back to get those that, that survived the tribulation. That is not even biblical. That's the false doctrine that these pastors have been preaching to the people for years. And we need to get into the word of God and study it to show ourselves approved. Because if you don't, you're never going to know the truth because people are going to mis mislead you. Um, well, if you're asleep when Jesus comes, yes, if you're, if you're asleep when Jesus comes back and he, he doesn't wake you, you know what? You'll be in the second resurrection. You're very right. You're very true. So you better hope and pray that you're in the first resurrection when Jesus comes back. If you have died, and that when you're called for, that you see his face and that you're not in the second resurrection because that's not going to bode very well. We know what's going to happen. <coughs> oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, some people, sometimes people will monitor for no, for nothing. But um, that's right. If you're, if you're worshiping idol gods, woe well unto you. We need to be worshiping the God of heaven. Is who we have. We need to worship. We cannot worship idol gods. We need to be worshiping. Welcome back, Laura. We need to be worshiping the God of heaven. Uh, I want everybody to hope to understand what I've said because I didn't. I I probably could have put a little bit more into my title. But, you know, I want people to understand. So if they start asking where Billy Graham's at, I can tell them he's not in heaven. He's going to be in his grave awaiting one of the two resurrections. Um, Jesus is coming back with his angels. He's coming back with his clouds. This could be very, very bright. Very, very bright. But i got to get ready for lunch in a little bit. But I want to thank you all for coming in here, the live viewers as well as the replay viewers. And I want to sing... I want to sing the sanctuary song like I do after every every scope, and um, and then I'll close this periscope. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Let us all be a living sanctuary for Jesus. I apologize for my dog. She always barks when I, she hears me sing that because she knows I'm done. But anyway, I thank you all for coming in and sharing this Periscope out. And I hope you all have a blessed and wonderful day, wherever you might be. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all later. And I'll be looking for your scope again tonight, Marilyn. Take care. God bless. And bye-bye. Love you all.